everyone, I'm Allie Buckman with the Potomac Bead Company and I'm going to show you how to do this Aztec Sun Bracelet today. This was designed by Anna and she used some of our newer beads to design this and I'm excited to use them as well and to do a video using her design. This uses a number of different new products. The base of it is actually going to be the two hold bars which the two hold bars are two holes. They're a two by six millimeter. We have them in a number of different designs um, and they are a checkmate product. We're also using our Potomac Bee Company product, the round duo beads. And the round duo beads are two hold round beads in a six millimeter. For the two hold bars, I'm gonna be using the opaque luster Picasso. And for the round duo, I'm using the aqua Picasso matted color. We're also gonna be using some bugles on the sides. That's what has that kind of sun look going up and down is that Aztec sun look. And I'm going to be using the bugle, the three millimeter bugle in the matte opaque turquoise AB color. This bracelet also calls from some 11 O's and some 15 O's. I'm using the check finishes in colors Crystal Sunset for the 11 O. It's a Crystal Sunset matte. And then the white Lila Gold Luster in the 15 O beam. And I'm gonna close mine off with a cup button here in the turquoise color. You can see Anna used a toggle on her, so either of them would work. Any sort of clasp or closure, I usually explain how to do that for you guys. Thread-wise, we're using 0 .006 Wildfire Beading Thread in the green color. And then I have two needles that I'm going to be working with. And the two needles here are size 10 needles, and they are the Lance needles in size 10. Again, you're going to want two of those. Sitting nearby also, I have my needle nose pliers to flatten out my thread to make it easier to thread the needles. I have my thread zap. I have some super new glue and then I'm working on a bead mat. So to start this bracelet, we're actually going to be starting with the underside of the bracelet. It has a nice three-dimensional look to it. When we were trying to think of names, we also thought this looked like a bridge, um, like a suspension bridge, but we went with the Aztec sun because of the round bead on the top and then kind of the sun rays on the side. But we're going to be working first with just our two hold bars as well as our 11 O seed beads. I'm gonna start with putting my cup button on and using that as my closure. We're gonna be going up and back the bracelet a number of times. So we're gonna be able to reinforce the clasp as we work with it. But right now I have two needles and I have the needles on a piece of thread that is about five feet long. We're gonna to have to add some thread, but I have both needles on that thread, one on either end of it, just doubled over long enough to work with. I'm going to decorate my cup button here with one of my bars, but I'm also gonna pick up three of my 15 O beads. I have the 11 and the bar sitting out first, so I just have those three 15 O's laying out. And then I'm going to put on my needle through the bar and through the cup button on one hole, one needle, through the two hole bar and the cup button on the other hole is going to go the other one here. Both needles are gonna come out the back and I'm gonna take that to the very end of my thread and you can see it just designs it and sits it up a little bit. This also would be a cute one to put a Swarovski crystal in. That would be the 10.7 size of the Swarovski crystal. When I'm coming out the back here, so I make it nice and easy to put on and off, you can see there's that curvature going on since it's in a, is a three-dimensional bracelet. I'm going to use three of my 11 O's on either side. So I have three on the right needle and three on the left. And I'm gonna let that drop down next to my cup button. Oh, and I lost one on the one. I'll put that back on. Okay, once I have those three on either side, we're going to be doing the underside of the bracelet first. So the underside is going to start out with a bar and then two seed beads on either side of the needle, a bar, two seed beads, and then coming together through a fourth bar. So it's a very simple pattern starting out. And we are gonna start out with a bar together. So one needle through left and right. So one needle going through one hole of the bar, one needle going through the other hole of the bar. Then we're gonna separate our needles. We're putting on two 11 O's and a bar. 
and two 11 O's on the right needle. We're gonna do the same thing on the left, two 11 O's, a bar, and then two 11 O's. And the bars are um, fairly good as far as consistency. There will be some like all two hole beads and like a lot of beads that the holes might be closed a little bit. That's just start a, some of the manufacturing of it um, is that it's tiny beads on a fairly large machine. So if you see when you're dumping out anything um, that has holes that are closed, you often can take a needle and just kind of ream that out. And a lot of different check products will have this issue and just kind of check them out beforehand. Once I have my pattern of my two 11 O's and then my bar and two 11 O's, I'm gonna bring the needles back together and put a two hole bar through with one needle on the left, one on the right. We're gonna continue that same very simple pattern the whole length of the bracelet here. So you're gonna do it right about, if you want a seven and a half inch or seven and a quarter, you're gonna do it right about seven inches, going back there, putting the bars on. About 20 bars going straight that you're doubling up will get you that length. So you're just gonna to continue to work until you get your desired length. Again, about seven inches will get you a seven and a quarter to seven and a half bracelet. If you have a smaller wrist like me, you may need it to be a little bit smaller on you. So stop a little bit short. If you would like to save some time, what I'm doing here is just using one needle at a time. That way I don't have to switch back from right to left. All I'm doing is picking up two seed beads and adding my two hold bar. That's going to work for one of the sides. And then the other side, I'll just come back and grab every other bar. But this keeps one needle in a hand at a time and it allows you to get one row done rather quickly. And then you're going to come back and do the other row as well. So this is just a little hint and a trick to keep going faster and faster to get that base row completed. So I've gotten done with my base row and I actually ended up with 18 of the two hold bars where they're joining. So I have 18 on my base here and I'm going to now go in and do the loop for the other side of my cup button. I'm gonna be using 28 of my 11 OC beads in order to do that. I'm going to pick up one of my needles. It doesn't matter if it's on the right or on the left. And I'm just gonna jump out a bunch of my 11 O's since I'm gonna be using them again. And I want to grab one of my needles again and you're gonna just put on 28. So this is after I'm coming out of a two hold bar and I've gone both needles through on one bar. I got 10 on there and I'm gonna get again to 28. It's 15. If you are doing a clasp that is not a cup button, what you'll wanna do is use at least three seed beads um, and it would be a good idea to use a wire protector. Anytime there's any bend or curvature to the bracelet, you're gonna get a little bit more stress at the stress at the clasp. So a wire protector is a good idea to use for that. I have my 28 beads on, my one needle here. I'm going to take that needle and take it down the other side of my two hold bar here. So it's gonna circle around going through the two hold bar on the other side in the opposite direction. Pull that nice and tight. And I'm gonna go back to the side that wasn't through the beads at all and sew that back through the bars or back through the beads and then through the bar on the opposite side. This is gonna reinforce the clasp, put two threads through it. If you're somebody that likes to reinforce it even more, which is a fine and dandy idea, you're gonna be able to get at least four pieces of this thread through it. And we can do that as we come back down the other side. I'm gonna go through that two hole bar on the other side and pull my thread. I'm gonna give a nice tight pull. This bracelet will have some curvature. So naturally when it sits, it sits a little bit here. You can see I can almost straighten it out, but it has a fun little curve to it as you're working with it. It will straighten out that if you do wanna hold it straight, you can, it's not gonna break any of your beads, but it does naturally sit in a little bit of a curve. 
Once we're out our two holes here, we're actually going to be adding the next layer to our bracelet. And instead of adding the round duos, which you might think, we're actually going to be adding our side beads. So the side beads are going to be our bugle beads here. Those are our three millimeter bugles. And what we're actually going to be doing is adding for every bead that has an open hole on the two hole bar, we're going to be adding our little bugle in between going through the two hole bar and coming back down and joining the bar below it. So I'm just going to start off with my right hand needle here. The left hand is just going to stay to the side. You're going to pick up one of your bugles, go through the outer two hole bar, add a bugle, and then you're going to pick up the two hole bar that's on the inside going through that one as well. I'm pulling through. You can see that's just going to get those little sun rays on our Aztec sun bracelet here. Again, add a bugle, go through the outer, give a nice tight pull, and this will start to kind of bring your bracelet up a little bit and have some curvature to it. And you're just going to continue going down the right side and then the left, adding the bugles on the sides to create this form. So you can see it's starting to get them to sit up on the side. When you turn it to the side, you have those little peaked rays that we're working on. So continue down the right and continue down the left. I'll meet you back up when we get to the cup button and reinforce that and then come back the other direction. So just to show you as we're working with it, here is kind of the design that's happening. Again, it is going to kind of turn and twist a little bit. That's okay because we're gonna pull it up together with our round duo beads when we get to those. So you're just gonna continue adding your bugles down each side here. And then we'll get ready to kind of hold them in place by adding our round duo beads. So continue to work down the left and work down the right. So I've gone the whole way with my bugles here and I'm coming out my last of my two hold bars, adding my last bugle in place. And then what I'm gonna do is kind of push one of my threads off to the side for now. And we're gonna reinforce that cut button clasp. So we're gonna go back through those beads there underneath the cup button. I'm going to go through, oops, we don't need to go through there. Going back through those 11 O's, up the cup button, at the same time go through your two hold bar, and at the same time go through your 15 O's, back down your two hold bar, and come out your two hold bar on the other side. I'm then going to pick up the thread and needle on the other side and do the opposite. So I'm going back through on the other side and coming down. So basically both needles are going to be coming out the bar, but you're just switching sides, which in turn is going to reinforce that cut button. You can see I have no problem getting that size 10 needle with this wildfire thread through those 15 O's at the top. And they have three threads through them. Once we come to the top now, you can kind of see the bracelet lays a little funky because it does want to have some curvature. I'm going to kind of force everything out to one side because it wants to turn over and under. And I want to make sure that I can see all my bugle beads, kind of turning them towards the top. What we're going to be doing now is basically closing it up we are going to be using our round duo beads at this point, so you can kind of move your two hole bars off to the side, kind of get your bead mat back in order, and we're also going to be using our 15 OC beads. So you can kind of grab those if you want, make little piles. We're done with, we're done with our bugles at this point, and I'm going to make little piles so I can get ready to go in and add my round duo beads, kind of grabbing those tops and kind of forcing the rays to sit in. So to do this one on the side here, my beads or my threads are coming out right after one of those two hold bars. And I'm going to actually take it again through my little, uh, my little cylinder there, the bugle bead. And where we're actually going to come out is right after one of those two hold bars. 
So you're gonna come out right after a two hold bar. And I'll do that on the right and left to get me in position to start. Just wanna make sure I don't get caught on my button there. Once I'm out there, we're gonna basically be following this two hold bar line. Those are what we're going to be grabbing on as we put our round duos into place. It's gonna start out with an 11 -0 on either side of my needles, one on the left, one on the right. I'm going to go through the same hole of my round duo bead. So I'm going through one hole of the round duo from right to left, that same hole from left to right. I'm gonna give a nice tight pull. That's gonna force that first round duo right in place and you see it sits right nicely in there. When I'm coming out the sides, that's where in the design, Anna put three of my 15 O's. I'm gonna sew through the round duo bead then from the bottom hole to the top hole with my right needle. On my left needle here, I'm gonna add three of my 15 O's. Sew from left to right, making sure you're not going through any of those 15 O beads because we're going to, on the sides then, add our another 11-0 on my right needle, 11-0 on the left needle, and then we're gonna pick up that two hole bar again. The left side is gonna go to the left bar, needle going through, give a nice tight pull. Right one is gonna go to the right side, coming through, giving a nice tight pull. And that will pull those into place. You can see it sitting right there, the little cute design. And it's also creating that little bit of a bump and a little bit of a fold. And when you're working with them too, if you do want it to pop out a little bit more, what we can do on the next one is we can actually add two of the 11 O's on either side before and after if you don't want it to pull as much and you don't want to see as much thread. That's kind of up to you. I'm not carrying a ton how much it's pulling in that direction, um, but I will just to follow Anna's pattern. We're going to add two of our 11 O's on the left and right, crisscross through one hole of the round duo. And the crisscross technique again is that going from right to left and left to right. I'm not sure why it's getting so dark in this video. A nice bright cheery sunny day and then as I come out here I'm gonna add my three 15 O's just to decorate the side of the round duo go from the first hole to the second hole coming out with that same needle while I have it in hand I'll put on two of my 11 O's and I'll pick up that next little two hold bar so that gets that one in place there I'm gonna come over to this other side here Pick up my three 15 O's, go from the first hole of the round duo B there to the second hole. When I come out the A side, I'm going to do my two 11's and through the little bar there. Give a nice tight pull and that's going to pop that right in place, laying right then along the side there of that Aztec design. So you can see there with Anna's colors that pop out there. I'm gonna do the same thing them, adding them as well. So again, two of my 11 O's go on, and I'm going through my round duo. While you have that in hand, if you want a little quicker step, you're gonna put on three of your 15 O's. I'm gonna sew from the top hole of that same round duo that you're in to the, or the bottom hole to the top hole. Give a nice tight pull that will kind of push it down into place. Add two more of your 11 O's and sew through that next little pop up two hold bead. Then I'm going to pick up my needle on the other side and create that same pattern. Two, and you're going to sew through that round duo bead, forcing it to lay down. And then we're gonna add our three 
of our 15 O's coming back through and adding two more 11 O's. So you can see the side view here. It's a little bit hard to see on the yellow mat exactly what I've got going on here. If I do it on the blue, you can see a little bit better. See if I can brighten it up for you. And there we go. And here we have those round duos right in place with little sun rays on the side. You can see that curvature starting to happen. If I hold it out, it can straighten out, but that has a little bit of that curve starting to happen just like Anna's did there on the side. So this is fun. We're going to keep going, adding those two, crisscrossing through, decorating the sides with three, crisscross through, add two, and continue on. And that's forcing those little rays, those Aztec sun rays there to sit straight up. So I've gotten to the end here of this Aztec sun bracelet and I'm getting ready to add on to those two last little holes of my two hold beads here and I'm going to take my needles just like I did on the other side where I started coming up the bugles and then into those two hold bars. I'm going to go into the two hold bar after coming out my round duo and adding my two 11 0 I'm going into the two hold bar. Then I'm going to go into the bugle, into the two hold bar on the other side of the bugle. And while your needle is in, if you can keep going and we're going to reinforce our loop clasp, wherever your needle pops out, you can just bring it right out and then put it back in to keep going. If you wanted to, you could also do a peyote stitch on this loop, which would decorate it a little bit more. But I'm going to reinforce this the whole way through. This is going to give a third strand going through my beads. We had two originally when we came down after the first base. And I'm going to bring this out right after the two hole bar. Or I'm sorry, right after the C beads before the two hole bar. Then what I'm going to do is go back to the other side here, finishing off this last one. I've added the two 11 O's going down through the two hold bar, down through the bugle, and coming out the two hold bar on the other side here. I'm going to give it a nice tight pull. That's going to bring my threads together. All I'm going to have to do then to finish off the project is actually take those two thread ends and just tie and do a square knot right over left left over right and it's a very simple ending to this Aztec Sun bracelet after I have the ends knotted I'm going to take my super new glue dab a little bit on and then take my thread burner and burn down my edges You can also take your slip and snip scissors and cut closer if you would like so you don't have as much to burn off. Then you're going to be completely done with your Aztec Sun bracelet. So you can see here if you do it with a toggle clasp, Anna did it here that on each ending she added the seed beads. I just brought it back in before the last bugle or she added a bead before the area. So this made it a little bit more polished here at the end. It's gonna be easier to put on and off, but this does give it a little bit of a fuller look. And when you're playing around, you can kind of play around with colors. Again, it does have that natural bend to it. This is a great bracelet that you could wear as a stackable. You could also make this as a bangle slip-on bracelet or make multiples to wear together. It's a nice simple design using those two hold bars as well as bugle beads, which a lot of people have sitting around and because you only use a very sh small fraction of the tube, it doesn't even look like I used any on the tube, um, you have a bunch usually sitting around of the bugle beads. So it's a fun way to utilize some of the newer project as well as some different beads and projects that you may have sitting around as well. So enjoy making this Aztec Sun Bracelet. Thanks a lot for watching. Have fun with all of these new beads. If you get a chance, you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel if you're not subscribed already. You can drop down on this menu to show more, which is going to be right below the video, and get the links to all of the products that are used in the video. If you get a chance, check out our website, potomacbeads.com. 
and you can visit one of our retail locations. If you're not by one of our retail locations, we'd be happy to ship to you online if you need products. And also check out our Facebook page where we update regularly all the different videos that we're doing, the new products that we're coming having in, and the new products that we're creating as well. Thanks a lot for watching and happy beating everyone.